Hi, this is problem 422 of our examples. And we like to find uh, the resultant moment and the resultant force at point, this is point A. So they are like us to actually reduce first the system of forces to point A and first and second further reduce the system to a single force. So let's do this part first. This part first means that I will find a resultant force and a resultant moment at point A. And this over here will find a resultant force at a distance from that point that gives me an equivalent system to this one over here. So let's start to find our resultant force. So the resultant force will be equals to F1 plus F2 plus F3. In this case, well, we are already have done many problems, so let's do it a little bit within this uh, equation right here. So we kind of, we will find the components of F1, and we will use the coordinate system X and Y. Therefore, we know, since our coordinate system is X, Y, we know that our moment contraclockwise is positive. So F1, F1 has only component in Y. So that's 200 pounds in J. Then let's find F2. F2 has two components. I have F2Y and F2X, right? This angle over here is the same as this angle over here. Therefore, F2. The component in x direction will be the cosine of this angle because it's the adjacent, which will be 3 fifths. So this is 100 times 3 fifths in i. And in j is a negative value, right? And it will be the sine of that angle. And the sine of that angle will be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So it will be 100 and 4 fifth in J. So I was able to find F1, F2, and F3 has also two components. This is F3 in Y, and this is F3 in X. So we have F3 in X will be the sine of 30, right? So it will be 50 sine of 30 in I, and in in J is also positive, will be 50 cosine of 30 in J. And all that in pounds. So now to find the result, and we, we will add all the I components, which are these two, and all the J components, which are these three. So finally we have that the result and force will be equals to. I have it right here. When I add this component plus this component, sine of 30, you know that is one half. So they will, this will give me 25 plus this, that it will give me 60. So I have 85 in I. And I have in J component will be this component, this component, and this component. And that gives me plus and 163.3 in J, all that in pounds. So we were able to find the first variable, which is this one right here. Now, to find the moment, the moment respect to point A is the moment produced by force F1 plus the moment produced F2, plus the moment produced by F3. 
Remember that I will not use vector notation because I will do the scalar approach. Using the scalar approach, we know that the moment is distance and force, and the distance has to be perpendicular to that force or to that component of the force. So let's do F1. I will do it the same as I did the uh, force. I will do in brackets, right, each of the components, and then I will add them together. So the moment produced by F1, as you see, this is already perpendicular, so it's easy to find the distance perpendicular to that force. That will be 3 times F1, which is 200. The sign is important. I will use the right hand rule. I put my thing, my hands. This is point A. My palm here is the distance, and I crawl the fingers to the force. So it gives me clockwise direction, contraclockwise direction. It gives me a positive value. So this is positive. And obviously, I know that it's in case, so I don't write anything else. So that will be the one for F1. So I got that one plus the moment for F2. As you see, F2 has two components, the component in x direction. This one right here is parallel to the distance, so this component over here does not produce any moment. The one that produces moment is the perpendicular to my distance. My distance is 6, and the force is the y direction. The y direction, we already found it, that is 100 times um, the sine of that angle, which is 4 fifth, right? We could write, we could write 40, uh, 80 if you want to. And the sine is important. So the distance over here goes in this direction. I curl my fingers, and this me, gives me a clockwise, so it's negative. Let me write it right here. Negative moment. And then finally, so I was able to find this one right here. Finally, I will find the moment produced by F3. In the same uh, case as F2, we have the x component, which is parallel to the distance, so it doesn't produce any moment because it's along the distance. So the only component is the perpendicular. And I put my fingers here at A, curl my fingers towards the force, and it gives me a contraclockwise, so it's a positive already, and the distance will be 9 times the y component, which will be 50, cosine of 30, which is square root of 3 over 2, and it's a positive. All that, I have to add all this together, I will give me pounds per feet. Be careful with the units. Pounds, because the force are given in pounds, and feet, because all these distance are given in feet. Finally, I calculate that moment, right? And that moment, when I add all this together, I find that it's 509.7 pounds per feet. Since it's positive, Since the moment is positive, I know that it's in contraclockwise. Okay, so we were able to reduce the system of forces yeah, this, to a point A, which is finding the resultant force and finding the resultant moment. We could actually also write this in terms of the magnitude, which is the square root of 85 square plus 163 square, so the magnitude is equal to 180 pounds and the direction, so it means that I have a, let me write it with green, so I have a force which is positive in both x and y, so it's a positive vector right here, right, at a, and I want to find this angle over here. That angle is the tangent 
That is one of the y component, which is 163 divided by 85. That gives me an angle of 62.5. So I was able to find my resultant force either as a vector or as a magnitude and direction. And I have found the magnitude of my moment and I know that it's in k direction and it's counterclockwise. Okay, so ne now this was part one. Let's do part two. Part two means Oh, let me write here the moment as well. So we will find reducing the system is a force and a moment. But now we want to find an equivalent system that it looks like that. This is point A that only has a force. So, re further reduce the system to a single force. Why can we do this? Because the force and the moment are per per perpendicular to each other. Therefore, we can find a distance where we can locate that resultant force and we will have no moment. So, this system of three forces is equivalent to this system with a force and a moment at A. And I can find, further reduce the system to a single force at a specific distance. So as you remember, we can decompose the force in x and y. So the moment produced by this new system will be equal to that distance times the resultant force in y. So that will be that distance times my 163.3 pounds, right? So how do I make this system right here equivalent to this one right here? I will use the same moment. So this moment produced by this new system has to be the same at this moment produced by these forces or this resultant force. So for, by these three forces, which is this one right here. So this moment over here will be equals to 509.7. Therefore, the distance will be equals to 509.7 divided by 63.3. Please remember that all my results, and I write in, I'm writing the results only with one decimal. If you don't want to find a half, rounding errors, keep in your calculator or in your notes more decimals because this is a secondary calculation with one, one variable, one number that we already calculated. So we have to keep at least four or five decimals in order to have an accurate result for a secondary calculation. And then I get that my distance is equal to three Point twelve feet. So it means that if I put the resultant force at a distance of 3.12, it will give me an equivalent system as this one right here that has a moment at A and a resultant force or at the system that has three forces. And that's how we reduce the system to a to we further reduce a system to a single force.